Okay, it's time for a new video for the OG Nord. As it seems like the brand is in deep sleep mode and also the newer phones are a priority for them now. No worries though. So today we have a new shapeshift OS ROM for the OnePlus Nord. And it is everything what Oxynos 11 should have been right from the start. So without any further delay, let's have a look at this new ROM for the OnePlus Nord. And before that, just make sure to subscribe so that you can be the first one to know when a new video arrives. Okay, first up right from the boot logo. So you get this similar pixelish vibes that we get with the most custom rooms. The launcher here is a custom one and not the pixel launcher, but it is very similar to that. And we have this Google feed on the left with no bloatware of any sort, which is always a great thing to have. In day to day usage, there are no issues with the fluidity and everything seems up to the mark. Now talking about the performance aspect, well, first up, let's have a look at the benchmark scores. So on N2, the device scores 3,96,000 as compared to 3,88,000 on the Oxynos 11. And we can see a similar sort of thing on Geekbench as well. So the device scored 601 in single core and 1783 in the multi-core score, which is decent enough for an initial version. So all that is definitely good. And that also means that the performance should be better than Oxynos 11. And you know what, it is better. So during my testing, all the applications and games ran just fine without any frame drops as I was using it on 90Hz all the time. The smoothness was definitely there which we expected from this SoC and device in general. Also I could see something similar while gaming as well and the device did handle BGMI sessions quite well as I tried both TDMI and classic matches. The game ran on smooth extreme settings just fine and the battery temperature that I could see after 30 minutes or so was around 42 to 43 degrees without any external cooling whatsoever. And the frame drops were a little here and there but quite better than what I saw with stock Oxynos 11. Also we have a dedicated gaming mode with this one, something that was missing with other custom rooms. So that's a good thing to have as you can disable unnecessary notifications and automatic brightness too which is required during gaming. So a great add-on nonetheless. The fingerprint scanner also works just fine mostly, though the icon disappears sometimes, but it doesn't break the functionality. So a minor issue that will get fixed really soon. Now coming to the customizations. So if I talk about that, well in first go you wouldn't be able to feel much difference between this and Oxynos 11. Just look at the settings and battery stats page. Well, they look just like Oxynos 11 and that's not a bad thing at all because unlike that, we have a pure dark mode instead of that grey stone here and there. And it might be a minor thing for you, but I appreciate it. You even get an option to clear the stats at any battery percentage, which helps a lot in keeping track of things and you won't have to charge a device till 100% to reset those. Also, there is no notification delay here, something that everyone deserves. Anyways, in settings, we have this already liked UI and in shapeshifter, we have a lot of things to cover. First up in the actions tab, we have some tweaks for the power menu, navigation bar, and we also get various on-screen gestures. And we also get three finger screenshot support along with long screenshots feature. So you basically miss out on nothing if I compare it with stock Oxynos. Lastly, we have this volume panel styles option and that also feels quite neat. Plus you have 6 other options to choose from, which is really a good thing to have. Also one more thing you will feel while changing the volume is the better haptic feedback support that you can feel with this every single percentage. In the interface tab, we have a couple of customizations. First up in the quick settings, you can basically tweak each and everything like the background tile style and the number of tiles that you see in the notification panel. In the themer options, you basically get all the accent colors and you can even choose your own custom colors along with other theming options from Oxynos 10 and 11. So you get all the controls everywhere. Lastly, you get the options to tweak notifications and visualization options on your lock screen. In the status bar options, you get a variety of controls too, like that battery icon and even an option to show various icons along with the network indicator options and a lot more. Something similar can be screen in that lock screen tab as well. 
So here you get all the controls like an always on display, fingerprint icon customizations and a lot more. So I will leave it up to you guys to explore all of those features. All in all a good feature packed room for this OnePlus Nord. Lastly talking about the battery life and that has been good too so far. So I can manage around 6 to 7 hours depending upon the applications I use normally. And this is pretty much in line with Oxynos 10 and better than Oxynos 11 as the ideal range that I saw was around 3% with Wi-Fi on during the night. And you can see the same in the graph on your screen. So overall I am pretty happy with the way this room has been doing. And I do recommend this one to Nord users who basically want stock Android 11 at its best with Oxynos 11 like features. So that's it for now and if you do end up liking this video, make sure you press the thumbs up button and subscribe for more content like this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.